right, guys, we're back again with another great episode of PFREI, A Passion for Real Estate Investments. I'm your host, Fuquan Bilal. We got another great show today. Nathan Brooks, welcome to the show, buddy. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm good, man. Thank you for having me. Awesome. We were just chatting up a few uh, before the call a little bit. We'll talk about that in a minute. But just to read your bio real quick. Um, So Nathan is the co-founder and CEO of Bridge Turnkey Investments, a home built in the Kansas City metro. Uh, poised to construct 60 new homes in its first year of operation. Hopefully I said that right. I usually butcher bios. But prior to building homes, Nathan uh, led Bridge as one of the top producing turnkey rental providers in the nation, adding over $45 million in value add to his client portfolios in just a few short years. Having invested since 2007, this guy's been market cycle tested, came in at the top of, this, of the down cycle, Nathan is an accomplished investor, sort after speaker, writer, real estate coach. He regularly produces educational content to fuel his passion for helping others learn and find success in real estate investing. To this end, he recently wrote his first book, No Quitter's Guide to Investing in Real Estate, which has already received accolades across, uh, from heavy hitters in the industry like Bigger Pockets, Brandon Turner. Both of them, but you buy it too much. But yeah, man. Let's jump right into it. So investors started in 2007, top of the market. Uh, you came in, the, I guess, the right time when things were going up and then boom, 2008, 2009. Um, I came in at 99. So it was like um, falling off a, a building. <laughs> you you kind of came in a little bit, you know, right at, right, at the, right at the cusp of it. So let's jump right into that. I love to, to speak to people who has been invested in real estate um, during that time because they they seem to have a little bit more knowledge and experience coming, you know, I guess around that time was catching a fallen knife, as they say. You know? It was. And I mean, in some respects, I caught, the, caught that knife uh, myself too. So, you know, 20, 20, uh, 2007, uh, really just cutting my teeth and and I really didn't have a mentor. I didn't have the you know, proverbial coach at that point, I really just did what often I have found myself doing, which is the ready, fire, aim method. Mm. <laughs> and sometimes it works really well. And sometimes it, it doesn't. And, uh, it's so the first day I bought a house about two and, uh, from a guy or with a guy rather that I literally met over hearing a conversation about real estate in a booth at a re- random restaurant, random dude. And, you know, three, four weeks later, I'm buying a house with him. So it was a really good start. Right, <laughs> uh, or or lack thereof, and so I I knew that I wanted to make a change. I knew I wanted to you know do something in real estate because I thought it was interesting. I thought I could make money, but I was missing a lot of the actual ingredients that what I now believe to be a great business, which is a clear vision of what the purpose is. Like, what is your impact for the clients you serve? What's the impact for the team that you? have put in mission to help you and what's the impact for you, right? Business, personal, and um, and for your family. And so I missed literally all of those ingredients in, in the process. Yeah. We were talking about a little bit of that on the call, um, you know, where, um, you know, I still have some challenges in the business. I was, I was pretty sure you do also, but we're just what you were talking about. You didn't have in the beginning that the vision, Part, right. So you were just mm-hmm. in GSD mode, just getting shit done. Just go, yep. go, 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 go. Right. How many houses can I get? How many rental properties I can get? How many houses I can sell? Right. Just chase, chase, chase. So you got to a point in your life where you said, wait a minute, you know, working Sundays at seven, eight o'clock at night, looking at kitchen cabinet designs and trying to prep for the next weekend. That's not the life. I thought no. real estate was freedom. <laughs> no, it's not. Well, you know, and and even like in the spirit, you know, of of the book that I wrote, it was one of those things where I've gone through this journey of saying, okay, it doesn't really matter how many houses you do. I mean, it's fun to say, it sounds good, like it strokes the ego. Um, you know, adding 45, 50 million dollars for clients. I mean, that's awesome. But then, you know, I also did the math and it was literally like, oh, well, guess what, Nathan? If you would have kept, you know, the majority of those houses, it's a uh, cool 140 150 million dollars in assets and then another cool you know 30 40 50 million at this point in equity and I own 50 50 with my partner so I left you know 15 20 million of net worth on the table selling all, all those off and and so you know over the over this course of time 
I realized that, you know, I didn't want a big business that's churning all this stuff out. I, I wanted a big life. I wanted to do cool stuff. I wanted to pursue hobbies and, and things that I enjoy. It's time for the gym, time to hang out with my family. And it wasn't that you couldn't do that. You just had to, I, for me, I had to look back and say, okay, well, what are the things that I'm really good at? And how can I utilize this, this tool, which is real estate? It's, that's not the end goal. I don't believe, you know, the real estate is not the end goal. The real estate is simply a tool that makes money, which is a tool, <clears throat> excuse me, which helps us live the life we want and experience success, which is that emotion and that thing we want to feel. So, mm, I like uh, you that. know, I, I've been on this 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 mission to dig into that and and live into that and be honest with myself and check my ego and see you know how can I really create that. Mm, I love that. I like that. Um, real estate is a tool that help us have success. That daily optimized experience sustainable over time. Yep. Right. I like what you said. How can I make my life bigger by using real estate as a tool to make my life more enjoyable? Right. Not yep. worrying about how many houses I sold, how much money I can accumulate, but how much more impact I can create to the people who I serve and also to myself, the things that I want to do. I love that, man. That's awesome. That's great. And I think that a lot of people who are on this real estate journey, whether you're new or you're a passive investor, um, having that vision first and figuring out how do you use this business to fuel your life versus, yes. you know, how do you grow your business? Because as, as, I think I read one time it said um, your business will only grow to the extent that you do. So if you're fulfilled, you're happy, you're joyful, it's going to show up in your business and the people who you serve. Yeah, thanks for that, man. Let's kind of talk about now. Um, well, I usually ask the guests one question. Why are you passionate for real estate investing? You want to share that with the group? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm passionate because, well, first of all, I get to talk to cool guys like you, right? And we get to vibe off each other and and learn from each other and, and be inspired uh, with what we can create together. And, uh, I'm, I'm an abundance mindset person. I'm a, a glass half full person, even a quarter glass full, you know, I, I I'm, I'm always looking to find ways to, uh, to have fun and enjoy my life. And, and, and so I found real estate through, you know, what many people have, uh, I, I'm assuming even now, you know, 16, 20 year old people, I don't know, rich dad, poor dad. It's a book that, you know, changed a generation. And for me, real estate became a passion because I could see it as a tool to get out of. So I, I played music professionally. So for two decades, I played music, play bass, play guitar, play piano. I still play and sing, taught theory in college, the whole deal. So I loved music, but music didn't serve me uh, in a way that I believed anyway, that I could create the level of income, the level of, of money that I could with, you know, with real estate. So as I, I got sucked into it and, and obsessed about it, but that obsession also became, uh, that an obsession instead of really honing that. So now understanding real estate is what it is, which is it creates uh, opportunities for me to do deals that, um, create a high leverage of opportunity. Uh, it's a beautiful thing when you can literally take something and create more value out of it. Like what other area in, in the world, you know, can you literally go in with little to no money, uh, with some experience some creativity and understanding and, and cool people to do it together and create wealth, create passive income and, you know, change neighborhoods, change people's lives. So, um, I fell in love with every aspect of what real estate is. And, and over time it's, it's changed certainly for me, but I, I think it's, it's just been a, a really cool opportunity to learn, uh, not only about myself, but about how I could, uh, make an impact through that for other people. Yeah, that's a good point. I um just listening to what you're saying, just thinking through my mind some some um challenges that everybody go through when they just go on the chase and they don't look at how can they impact, how can they serve, right? Because that's where the fulfillment part comes out of it. Yes. Um, you're doing this for a purpose and um, you know, it gives you that feeling of importance to be able to add value to others. So I'm I'm assuming that's why you do some coaching and other things where you're you're pouring it on to people and giving it back and tutoring people so they don't have to go through the um, the challenges that you went through early on. Let's talk about that a little bit, the coaching that you do. Sure. Yeah. Well, I, I've done both one-on-one coaching and now I'm doing some coaching within, you know, actual businesses too. Literally last week was in 
for four teams, three, three, um, three time zones in five days, which was, which was a hectic trip. But, you know, I, I love solving problems and I love problems. And I think sometimes people get daunted with, with a, with a problem that feels overwhelming. And literally the first chapter of the book is like, if only I could, and bro, how many times have you and I been in a conversation with someone who literally said, I wish if only I could figure this out, but da, 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 I don't have time. I work a job. I don't have the education. I don't have, but like on and on and on and on. Well, guess what? Like I'm listening to David Goggins second book right now too. So I'm like on fire. Yeah. About, yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. That dude lights me up. Uh, but like, how about we stop making excuses? Like I'm, I want to coach and help you because you want to help yourself. I want to coach because you have a problem to solve and I've already been through that problem or I can help see something that you can't see. Not because I'm better. It's just because I've done it, right? Like you, you've been in real estate since 29, uh, 99, 99, 24 yeah, 99. years, 24 yeah. years. Incredible. Right. So you, you've seen, you know, multiple, multiple cycles, uh, and you and I get to bring a perspective and help someone work through a problem that seems so daunting to themselves that we can help do that in a way that's both um, kind, constructive, but also, you know, if we need to, if I need to hold a, hold a line, I can do it because I'm not afraid of that. I, and I've already, I've suffered through those things. And, and I think a lot of times people are afraid of doing the hard work. And as a coach, I also don't want somebody who's not going to do the work. Yeah, I, and and we know. I, I love. Um, I think Grover is his last name. Wrote wrote uh, two different books, winning, and I I can't relentless. Maybe is the other one, but Michael Jordan's coach, right? Yeah. Michael Jordan, the baddest man on the planet in the basketball arena, had a coach, right? The 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 baddest people on the planet have coaches. They all do. And they yeah, and they you have need a coach them, to survive. I mean, you can't really to survive, right? To grow too, right? A hundred percent. So I love coaching because I love, so, we're all some days the teacher and all some days the student. Yeah. And, uh, and I love being both. Yeah. Always the student. And just going back to what you were just saying, um, there's a saying that says excuses or results. You can't have both. Mm. You got to have either one. That's good. <laughs> so you That's need a good. coach to help you get those results. Let's talk about the marketplace now, man. We're in, uh, we're in we some headwinds here. We got some choppy waters. Um, yep. You know, no one knows that the outcome is going to be where we're in a basically a recession. And, and it's it's hard times in the market now, meaning things are slower. Uh, how are you navigating through these choppy waters? What are, what are you doing? And what's the message that you're putting out to your team members um, to keep that uh, culture going? Two very good questions. So first of all, um, I was in, you know, four offices across the country last week. Uh, there's a lot of positive things actually going on right now, uh, comparatively to like Q4. I don't know about your business, but we we got our teeth kicked in in Q4. It wasn't fun uh, in, in, my, in our, my personal real estate uh, construction development business. We had, we had other things that really went very well. Uh, I have an Airbnb business that is crushing it. I have a development business that's crushing it. But like in our active active business. Um, it was tough, but, uh, I, both here in Kansas city, which I have, we have a small group of guys who are all, you know, pretty high level operators. So we get together, everybody's seeing stuff starting to, to move again. Uh, we're seeing like on a national level, we're seeing a mortgage applications up, uh, even refinances up a little bit, which is cool. Uh, and we'll see again tomorrow what the fed does. But, um, I think overall compared to where we were in, you know, November, December, we're, we're in a much better place, at least from what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing on the ground. So I'm being more cautious on my underwriting. I'm not, I'm not like if it was an 80% LTV, uh, max or, you know, 70, now I'm at like 70%. I, I'm not messing around. I'm, and I'm not, uh, I want to build in a margin to make sure that, you know, if ARV drops 5%, I'm still, I'm still good. Um, in Kansas City, also here, like we haven't seen huge swings like a, a East Coast or West Coast market. So those markets really see these incredible appreciations. Although we have too here, which has been pretty wild, but um, historically we haven't. So I'm just watching the trends of where we have been and and kind of what's happening. But we still have very low inventory. 
uh, very low inventory. And so I'm curious what you'll say, but uh, you know, starting here, I would say over the last two weeks uh, and like I was in a client's office in San Diego. I mean, I would say for a month, they've been on fire. Uh, They've been really starting to see stuff uh, churning up more contracts and more buyers. Yeah. So we're, we're in the Northeast. So um, the demand, I won't say is super strong, but we still, we didn't like slow down like the rest of the country. Yep. Um, Instead of things going on the contract in a week, you know, it's a month. Yeah. Um, which so is I normal, use, right? Which is normal, right? No, we're back um, to a normal cycle. Yeah. We had economists. Uh, I went to see an economist speak. Uh, he's very good in New Jersey. He said, hey, Fuquan, be prepared. Values are going to drop by 10%. And I go, okay, well, things were selling 30% of a list. So what does that mean? So it's a good things question. Things were selling 30% of a list. If values going to drop by 10 then uh, do the math. Yeah, We're yeah, still at or above yeah. our list price, right? So, you know, and I'm waiting 30 days instead of a week, and I don't have to line up in size order to see a property anymore. Great. You know, yeah. So, <laughs> and, and to your second question, well, I'm glad to hear that too. So that's that just further, uh, you know, sounds like this the same news I'm hearing. Uh, and it's still hard to find deals. Like I'm I'm still actively Correct. looking for. For right. deals, uh, and then from a team perspective, and this is something I'm I'm really well, passionate about. It's hard about. to find great deals. Nate. Great deals, yes. It's yes, to find yes, great it's deals. Not hard to find crappy deals. They are yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I keep seeing them come across like 85, 90 percent all in. I'm like, no, who's buying that? Like, stop sending this to me. Uh, no, Nathan, you, I, we want to do another deal. I'm like, yes, we do at yeah. at, at the right price. Uh, but uh, team perspective, you know, I think there's nothing more important in in any time than a leader setting both culture and being consistent with what the values are of that company, what their purpose is, what they're doing in and, and coordinating and communicating what's happening. And so it, if we're not doing that as a leader, you know, every week, if not every day, we're going to lose our people because they're going to be reading and watching the news. They're going to be hearing whatever crazy stuff's going on out there. And it's our responsibility, right? One of my yep. favorite authors is Jocko Willink, wrote Extreme Motors, you know, multiple New York Times bestselling books. And he always talks about like whose responsibility it is. It's the leader. The leader is responsible to set the tone. And and uh, so, you know, I, I've been very honest and transparent, like, hey, we had a tough, tough quarter, tough month, whatever, but things are moving. Uh, things are getting better. We're seeing more activity. We, we these are still our objectives and we are going to actually take action towards the thing that might be uncomfortable but unlike people who stop moving in that direction who will lose their business or lose their opportunity lose those relationships we're going to build them we're going to deepen them and we're going to crush it with what we had planned for this quarter this year and and going forward yeah you have to get them to rally behind you because they are at the boots on the ground Mm-hmm. And then the people that's going to really help you. Everything is with team. Like people don't understand that. That, and, and I didn't understand it when I first got started. I thought everything was me, me, me. I was like, I'll do it. Get out of the way. I can do it all. Mm. Until you, some people either go through a burnout, they get frustrated, they quit. There's a lot of quitters after 2008. You know, a lot of people just said the hell with this real estate thing because uh, the wind was in a lot of people back back then. So now it's after that market cycle. The, the real people like now, the real buyers are coming out and the real the real players are showing up. And this is an opportunity where the wealth is going to be created, right? So even though things are slowing down, it's an opportunity to buy great deals, not just to do a deal to do a deal. You got some deal junkies out there that are speculators, so you want to be careful. Yeah. But se- sending that right message out to your, your partners, your, your investors, right? A lot of them have certain expectations of returns, but because they've been spoiled. So now that message has to go out. Hey, you know, it's all about principle preservation. You make a return and that's great. If you were making 10, 9, 8, you know, now you're making 6, it's still great. We, we got your principle intact and we're going to make sure that um, everything goes right because you were someone who is market cycle tested. You were someone who has experience. So it's also the time to align yourself with people who has those battle scars, who has that experience. So, yeah. Yeah. And, they, and they're they not afraid or undaunted. Like I would be lying if I said there weren't days and I'm like, gosh, this, this sucks. Fuquan, this sucks. Like I'm not having fun, but there's also days when I, then I have the realization, like what problem do I want to solve? 
Like, do I want to solve this problem or do I want to solve that problem? Like working behind a desk uh, with some job that I don't enjoy, that's not building the life that I really want. And so I, I'm not willing to trade that problem for this problem. Yeah. No quitters guide to investing. Make sure you guys go check that out. That's on uh, investing in real estate. That's on Amazon, correct? Yep. It's on Amazon, books, Barnes and Noble, books, million. Uh, you can get it anywhere books are sold and um, yeah, but just came out January 10th. So it's been really cool so far. Make sure you guys check it out. No quitters guide to investing in real estate. I'm looking for some social media handles. we got, uh, it's really no simple. Guide.com. Yeah. No quitters And uh, then Facebook, Instagram, uh, uh, LinkedIn is all Nathan Brooks, uh, Nathan Brooks, R E I. So oh, easy yeah, to find. It's really simple. <laughs> I like they all the same too, right? That was a challenge for me. I had this name for Instagram, this game for Twitter. And somebody was like, it should all be the same. Fuquan. So I was like, yeah, at Fuquan below. Yeah. So <laughs> dude, that's, that's awesome. It makes it a lot easier for, for us. Right. And it makes it a lot easier for people to find you too. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate your time. All right, everybody. Nathan Brooks. This is a good, good uh podcast make sure you guys check them out on social media make sure you guys get the book on amazon another great episode of pfrei passion for real estate investments i'm your host for kwan Bilal. be sure to check us out on youtube like subscribe and share and catch us on all the other social media channels and podcast channels thanks a lot nate appreciate it bro appreciate you too brother